We are here, we're really privileged to have uh, Barry Matsumori with us. Tell us a little bit about your story, um, you know, how, where did you start and how did you end up at Virgin? Just a quick snapshot. Oh. I am at Virgin Galactic. Uh, I was uh, prior at SpaceX, yeah. but actually I'm not part of the aerospace industry or rockets or launch. Uh, most of my career has been spent at Qualcomm, working on mobile phones, mobile phone technology and several startups. So I'm a tech guy. It just so happens that I did work 25 years ago on the Atlas rocket at a company that no longer exists, General Dynamics. What are you passionate about? What drives you? I'm right now focused on things that we can do to help the world, uh, help Earth be a better place. Uh, at one time, I really did believe in the whole Mars bit, and I think it's still noble. Uh, it's just that I think there are plenty of problems on Earth that we need to go solve. In terms of making a difference and the social impact of the work that Virgin Galactic mm -hmm. is doing, is it, are we going to be able to reach the seven, eight billion people in terms of internet connectivity, in terms of education, in terms of others? Are those the kind of social platforms that you're working on or is it beyond that? As a minimum, it's that. I mean, uh, we, uh, we being Richard, uh, Richard Branson made an investment in OneWeb. Uh, what's his vision? He wants that connectivity to the broad uh, numbers of populace on Earth. Not only for, you can provide services for urban or suburban areas, but really for the remote, desolate areas that have no connectivity whatsoever. They can get that. And they can get it not only meager bandwidth, they can get big bandwidth and have equivalent services to somebody that's sitting in a major metropolitan area. That's called equivalency and that's called true democratization. Are we going to find resources and asteroids and stuff like that that can help us in the near term, near term in our case being say 10 to 20 years? Uh, 10 to 20 years, I think the answer is yes. 20 years, not the 10 years, but the 20 years. Yes, I think we already know the resources exist, whether it's on the moon or on any asteroid. The only question is, uh, actually one of the biggest things and why I'm also involved in the space business is access. Without space access, without reliable, low cost per kilogram, uh, scheduled space access, none of space is gonna happen. What is your advice to the 60 year old ah. <laughs> <laughs> board member, strategic thinker, yes. chairman sitting yes. there looking at this, all the shifts taking place. Yes. What's your advice to them? Sort of key nuggets, key take. -off. Do one thing. If, uh, if you can do the one thing, it would be substantial and that's go find a less than 30 year old that you follow, that will actually keep you very, very honest. Right. It can't be much older than that. And they have just this paradigm that if you don't understand it, it hurts your brain, that's really good. Right, it's a real privilege, thank you. Thank you.